There you go. Okay. okay. You wanna go first or me, Butch? I think me. <laughs> okay. Okay. Thank you, Veronica, for giving the floor for regional grand committee. So as Veronica mentioned, this session is actually follow up for the regional grand committee session in Wikimania. So I think some people uh, in the conference, some people are asking to have uh, interactive session to you know have a chat with the regional grand committee to answering some more question that they are wondering like why the question about the proposal is too much for them and then how the regional grand committee uh, review the proposal and making the decision so i will just uh, review a bit in the conference we talk about uh, what is the regional grand committee basically uh, it is a a group for reviewing and making the decision for uh, to support the wikimedia foundation for a uh, grantee for proposal who uh, applied to be uh, to be funded by the wikimedia foundation and then i think i will uh, i'll jump to some question that may be uh, important from the uh, conference so the first question is about how long are the term limit of uh, regional grant committee it is two years and uh, a, per, a, pe a person can renew the term uh, up to four years. And then the second question is about the eligibility for regional grant committee, how they are being recruited. So it's actually uh, of various, uh, various consideration some of us actually apply to be a regional grand committee and some of us actually uh, to be appointed uh, appointed to be a grand, regional grand committee. And then the third question is about flux, uh, a guidance for beginner. It's actually, if you put, uh, if you search from the meta page, there is a full tutorial for flux how to apply how to you know, how to how to manage the uh, proposal and then as uh, the last question is about the conflict of interest for regional grant committee if they are apply for a grant because a uh, uh, regional grant committee is not a staff it is a volunteer role uh, it is under community resource team so if uh, if a person happen to be uh, apply for a grant, they will be rescued rescue from the uh, from the review and the making decision. So the person cannot review and making decision about the their proposal. Yeah, I think that's for me. The next is someone from if anyone from regional grand county want to add, I will give it the floor. Okay, um, just to, for the benefit of everyone, um, the uh, regional grant committees is uh, selected uh, by, uh, by application. Uh, each one of us uh, submitted an application uh, expressing interest to join a, uh, to the regional grant committee. Uh, and then uh, <clears throat> from there, we were, uh, we were given some set of questions on how uh, uh, how are we uh, eligible on this position? And then after uh, such as uh, how our experience with communities and also how how uh, we are uh, getting involved in uh, in uh, the process. And then after that, after we have selected that uh, we were briefed on uh, the structure of the regional grant committees. Uh, as uh, the word says, it is, uh, regional in nature it is not uh, global as uh, it was uh, used to do and, uh, and then now uh, we review applications that are based on uh, the region so uh, uh, these applications include uh, the community uh, annual grant 
and uh, the uh, and uh, the alliance uh, alliances uh, fund. Okay, uh, we are also sometimes uh, consulted uh, in some uh, applications uh, related to uh, rapid grants. Uh, however, it is still within the discretion of the program officer on uh, the final decision for the rapid grants. Uh, then uh, probably we could uh, also give it to the other uh, regional grant committees on uh, their processes as well. Uh, uh, Harriet, do you wish to add something? Yeah, thanks, Bush, and um, thank you. Um, I hope you can hear me. Yes, yes um, we can, Harriet. Yeah. And just to highlight a bit that um, sometimes um, as a committee, when we realize that there's uh, the need to add an extra person who might be missing in terms of um, gender, di um, bringing in diversity to the committee, we reach out to people um, or individuals that we think would be of great help to us. And if they are available, um, they can join us as part of the committee. And um, like we said, there's the issue of um, conflict of interest. And then we do well as a committee to ensure that there's a fair review, um, ensuring that people with co any form of conflict of interest do not partake in the review process. Yes, so I would like to share that as well. So maybe um, as we wait for anyone else, if anyone, does anyone have a specific question, something you've been curious about the regional funding committee, whether it's its composition, its role, its future, um, where we have, you know, responses, we will provide them where we, we need to, to get back to you, we will, we will do that. Uh, but at this point, just you know, creating this space uh, for people to uh, voice their questions or comments or something you've been curious about that um, you would love to ask directly because we have um, regional funding committee members from all over uh, the, the, the different regions. Yeah. Omar, Musa? Uh, good day, Veronica, and good day, everyone. I, I hope you can hear me. Yes. Yeah, I, 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 I mean, it's, it's, it's a wonderful, uh, to be here with, with you guys. Uh, it's a very, a nice conversation, uh, having you all around. Uh, there is this thing that I've been very curious to ask, though it's slightly different with the rules uh, of the committee. Uh, uh, I think uh, around is it March or February there have been application for the for community members to be able to join the regional committee, more especially Africa Regional Committee. And uh, we've uh, we did the application and there were a time that we received an email that the final result or uh, the final outcome of the application will be posted on Meta and around, I think it's July, June or July. I cannot really recall the date. So what I really want to ask is, I, I don't know if it is me that I did receive any further information regarding that, or maybe I don't really know what really happened. So I wanted to ask what really happened regarding that, because I don't think I received any other information on that. Uh, the last email I received was the plan on revealing the outcome of the applications, I think is it 7th July, I can't really recall the date. So I wanted to ask uh, what's been happening or is it me that I missed the email? I, I don't know. So that's my question. Thank you. Thank you, Omar. Uh, it's a good question. Uh, so depending on the, the region, sometimes, um, a committee may need to do a number of I want to say calls, especially when the initial call, you know, does not um bring out as many people or does not um I want to say result to as many people applying. So because of that, there could have been delays uh, here and there. However, for the Middle East and Africa region, that process is coming to an end. Uh, there was applications at the very end. We got about 40. 
the regional fund, current regional funding committee took time to review and shortlist uh, the final list, but then there's an additional process where a program officer needs to interview each of those shortlisted members to verify on a few eligibility criteria points. Uh, depending on uh, requirements or uh, language support needs that can take long um, than expected, uh, but I can assure you that process will be coming to an end by mid-September. So you should be hearing from from um, from me because I'm the program officer. And for the other regions, you should be hearing the final outcome from your program officers, especially if there was a need to do a number of calls uh, just to get um, members to join the committee. Uh, but our hope is that by the time we begin um, the review process of round one uh, of applications, the committee is set and ready. Thanks, Martha. Any question to committee members? Or are there committee members who would love to share what their experience has been so far in, in the Regional Funding Committee. Yes, um, Consta. Bonjour. J'aimerais poser une question. Après, comment appelle-t-on, et la liste des candidatures Et pour ceux qui vont intégrer le comité régional, après cette liste finalisée, les personnes qu'on a intégrées, intégrées parmi nous, quelle sera la suite? Sachant que nous, quand on entrait dans le comité, il y a eu une phase de formation qui a duré quand même un petit moment. Est-ce que cette formation... Les nouveaux auront cette formation et comment pourront-ils s'adapter quand même à la ligne de mi que nous qui sommes un peu plus expérimentés sommes déjà habitués. Merci. Thank you and I'll invite my fellow program officers to jump in. Uh, as well. Um, yes, there will be training just like we did in with the first, um, I want to say, cohort of committee members. Um, when we started, we did have a number of trainings. Some of that training that will be shared with the new members uh, will require some self-paced learning. Others will emerge as we go. A good example is within, um, uh, for example, the Northwestern Europe, there will be an upcoming training around diversity, equity, and inclusion. That's a new training that wasn't there before. Then we will be rolling it out to other regions. Of course, we are looking at different uh, things, including um, current, uh, you know, what's on the plate of committee members. So if this is happening during a funding round, there's the funding round that is typically very tight and busy for committee members. So we would want to make sure that we are pacing and spacing the, the trainings um, to accommodate the needed, you know, flexibility around time. But yes, there will be training Part of it will be that they will be using past recorded sessions from trainings that um, past committee members and current committee members have gone through. Uh, as we go along, as we continue to see emerging needs around areas that need um, either strengthening of existing capacities or uh, building on new capacities uh, or tapping into something that's happening within uh, our movement, then we are always open to bring that on board. So if there is a training that you you would 
you as committee members, you realize this is a good training that we need to bring to support our process of um, ensuring equitable distribution of resources, please let us know. But I'll, I'll pause here in case um, any of the other program officers have additions as well to make. Yeah, if I may add, hi, uh, um, this is Mercedes uh, from the Latin American and Caribbean uh, uh, region. Um, we are, given the fact that these past two years have been uh, kind of a very important learning experience for all fronts, we're also going to make sure that existing committee members align to all the new changes that are happening. So I would say that this training for new committee members will also for those uh, existing committee members will also be useful. And in some cases we will do them together because particularly regarding changes to like recent changes to, to, to the process. So I would like just to say that this is, uh, we also, we, we want to maintain this um, effort of continuous learning and continuous uh, training to our existing committee members. Is, uh, does the response have the question? All right. I'll go to a question on the chat that was quoted by um, uh, Mikhail. Uh, my question uh, that is about the one year renewal are regarding. Uh, the required work plan mentioned in question five, which parts should it include? Is there a recommended template we can work with? So that's around there. When I look at question five is, does your organization or group have an affiliate or organizational annual plan that can help us understand your proposal? If yes, please provide it. Um, so this, this question... Uh, sorry. Yes. So for this question, I'll, I'll speak to the annual plan. Dif different groups, depending on where they are as an organization, might have an annual plan that is, for example, resourced 100% by the foundation. In some cases, the annual plan, not all of it is resourced by the foundation. So and when we look at... Uh, Again, different organizations at the different levels they are in. A group at the beginning or in the previous year might already map out what they want to achieve in the next year or in the next two, three years. Um, in this case, when we request for it, if you have it, the word is if you have it, is that it does support us in understanding a little bit more about your work. So while it is required to respond, it allows us to know, do you have an annual plan that is able to support us in understanding of all the plan, of all the programs you have shared in your annual plan and compared to your second part to question eight to the strategies or programs you are putting or proposing for, for the foundation to resource? Is this something that can ship, can support us in knowing a little bit more about your work holistically? In case you don't have it as a group because of you know the stage you are in as an organization, that's okay. Uh, it's it's you don't have to have it, but if you do have it, we do want to understand what is affiliate X you know working on for the next year. When we look at question eight, are we able to assess um, what do you want? What are the spe specific strategies that you're looking to achieve? They may be the same. In some cases, they're not the same. And in some cases, the annual plan to some groups is a separate document, very separate from the application you're making for the general support fund, for example, but could have similar uh, language around the programs or strategies you're focusing on. I hope that's helpful, uh, Mikhail. And in, in case not, please uh, let me know now. I'll try verify it or elaborate further. Uh, 
Uh, Sandra, I don't get your question. I, I may have missed something else before. Veronica, I think yeah. Sandra is asking about the difference between question five and question 10. Uh, okay. While question five is asking about the annual plan, question yeah. 10 is asking about the timeline. So I think Sandra oh. wanted to understand the difference. Um, yeah. 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 So question five, uh, yes. So question 10 is about the operational calendar. So what is the, it's almost like a work plan. It's a simplified work plan without, you know, the roles, the time to each program. Uh, while the annual plan is, for example, a good indicator is like the APP. The APP is the foundation's annual plan. Um, but within that, uh, we we haven't specifically said that we will do this in quarter one or in January, February, March. Uh, we, have, we haven't gone into the detail of a timeline. Yeah, and I know different groups here uh, have diff have examples of timelines. So if anyone is open to sharing um, their timeline, you can put it here. If you have an annual plan, you can put it here so that people can see the difference as well. But I do hope that that clarifies, David. Yeah, and to add what you said, I think if your annual plan includes a timeline of your activities, you can simply upload your annual plan in that question. So no need to create another timeline on top of your annual plan. Sandra, does that help? I'm going to try and look for a few examples, but if anyone, in, I know we, we have different affiliates represented here. If you have a timeline you've worked with before, you've seen before, please feel free to, to put it in on the chat. Okay, I'll, we'll, we'll get that example. Other questions as I look onto the either part, if we have a few questions. Uh, is the question uh posted by Yumiko had been answered already. Um, let me repeat. Would you maybe repeat that? Because when you were answering, I think Yumiko wasn't in the call. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'll put it on the chat. So I'll read it. Yumiko, your question is about um, asking Kiwix for community grant application. Uh, Yumiko, the question is about the role of Kiwix. Um, so, uh, too much for each payment in addition to broader gaps between. Okay, okay, okay. So, uh, this is a good question about fiscal fiscal partnerships. Yeah. So, a fiscal partner is a partner that um, comes in to support where there are barriers in fulfilling um, a grant, okay? So you've applied for a grant and Morgan is here, so she, she can also add to what I live out. Um, um, so Kiwix is one of those partners who've been very, you know, important and critical to us supporting uh, partners who are not able to 
fully fulfill the receiving or the yeah the receiving of a grant so they become the the middle the fiscal uh, partner uh, depending on the fees attached to the transfer from Kiwix in this place to your user group normally this is added within the the grant so at the very beginning, we would check with Kiwix. Uh, um, do they anticipate any changes? Let's remember, you know, with uh, global economics that there's a lot of fluctuation around the Forex. So we are always updating ourselves. So if that, that's happening in your end, the main thing to do is just write to Stefan, who's our main contact, uh, together with uh, Morgan, who's here as well. So that then we are able to know that we are either experiencing a for, for, forex loss that then uh, limits the full um, amount that you receive as as a grantee. And I'll let Morgan uh, add a little bit more uh, in case on on the fiscal partnership in case anyone is uh, curious. Yeah. Hi everyone. Uh, thanks, Veronica. Um, as she mentioned, I'm Morgan. I'm the grant administrator, and um, I know I've worked with many of you. Um, so please let me know if there's anything I can clarify about fiscal sponsor organizations, um, and and any type of the logistics that are that entail um, with with that type of partnership. Um, generally, especially in the application process, or I guess when you submit your application as a grantee, um, we would ask you in advance if you have a fiscal sponsor and whether there is, like Veronica mentioned, um, a fee that, that could be attached to the management of your grant if it's funded. Um, typically, this could be a percentage of your grant um, that is added. Um, but it could be a, a different amount at any, um, depending on what the, the organization um, prefers. Um, yeah, um, if there's anything other than that that's more specific around um, how we uh, review these organizations or how we work with them, please let me know. And just to answer, yes, um, as what Sandra said in the chat, um, we also are open to um, existing affiliates within the movement to service fiscal partners. We we kind of um, we discuss with them what their role would be if they are unsure about that, um, and yeah. Okay, thank you, Veronica. So I think I will answer based on the last review from the Asia region. One of the uh, consideration about the fiscal sponsor is when the new affiliate doesn't have like bank bank account and then the money like goes to personal account, that will be uh, reviewed by the government. That, that will be like, uh, 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 you know, the the... The organization had not been legalized in the country, so that's the consideration about the fiscal sponsor. So no money, like the, like all the money goes to in the personal account. Yes, good. Thank you for the <laughs> for the chat. And just to clarify what uh, Gosi had mentioned, uh there are banks who uh, have a, a, a remittance alert uh, wherein if they receive a a huge amount uh, if a depositor receives a huge amount of uh, money uh, especially in their personal account and it's not in their average uh, uh, deposit uh, uh, monthly deposit uh, for instance, they are they are only receiving three hundred or five hundred dollars per month, and then suddenly it spiked to twenty five thousand dollars. It will flag an anti money laundering alert, so they will need to hold the uh the the remittance or 
to hold the the wiring of the account and investigate if this is coming from a, a unknown source that's why uh it is it is really best that uh uh, proper coordination needs to be done before the money is remitted to a personal bank account. That is why uh, some orga some uh, small organizations uh, tend to use uh, a fiscal sponsor to ensure that the money is not being held by uh, their uh, personal bank. Thank you. Any other questions um, that people have? So probably I could also use the floor to uh, share our uh, one of our practices here in uh, the ECF region. Uh, for instance, there is an applicant uh, who has uh, a lot of uh, concern, I mean, uh, and the uh, the grant application uh, is still questionable. Uh, it needs uh, further clarity. Uh, rather than we reject the uh, application outright, we leave uh, some rooms uh, for for improvement. Uh, for instance, uh, the we ask uh, from the regional grant committees ask the uh, the uh, program officer if they could uh, consider adjusting their uh, their uh, how they describe each and every item uh, of of. Uh, uh, how they describe their, their budget, how is it aligned on their goals. So with that, uh, the program officer go, goes back to the uh, grant applicant and then uh, further uh, improve the, uh, the grant application. And then from there, uh, we, could, uh, we could deliberate again in the regional grant committees if we will consider the, the answers of the grant applicant uh, with the improved uh, uh, answers, uh, probably some uh, with some coaching in, uh, as well on how they would improve their the grant application. Uh, there are cases that uh, uh, neither program officer or the grant uh, regional grant committees have ideas on a specific question. So uh, I answer, I mean, uh, to a, our specific question. So we sometimes we call on the grant applicant to join one of our uh, meetings uh, and then uh, allocate probably about 10 minutes of their time uh, on, on our meeting. Uh, to clarify uh, the answers that they have provided and then see if uh, uh, this uh, clarifies uh, or, or uh, the ambiguation uh, that we, uh, how uh, uh, the ambiguation that we understand on the, the grant application. So uh, from there, uh, the grant application was uh, eventually approved. Uh, with some adjustments, of course, uh, with our uh, based on our deliberation or uh, discussion, and then uh, the, uh, the the grantee were able to uh, uh, perform their functions uh, with the how how they would uh, circumvent or or probably uh, uh, made a creative way on uh, working on their ex uh, the grant that was approved from them. Okay, so uh, basically, uh, uh, there are times that uh, when we get got in each other's uh, uh, in Wikimania, they, they uh, narrate to us the success stories that they have on, uh, on their projects, uh, courtesy of the grant that they have received, and were elated that uh, they were able to uh, uh, complete the, uh, the segment of their report uh, or particular uh, section of their report because uh, uh, they, they know how to do it next time. That that's a, that one of the things that we could share in this this discussion. So basically, we're not just doing a binary yes or no uh, on grant applications. We should, should we usually find ways to imp, uh, for a grant applicant to have some second or third chance to uh, further improve their the grant application. Thank you, Butch. 
Um, I see, Mikhail, your question. Or can someone share an example of question eight? Um, asks about strategies, approaches, theory of theories of change, and programs. Um, so for question eight, I'll I'll just speak a little bit about it, and then I know within the ECF, Middle East, and Africa. South Asia, there's been recent submissions uh, of proposals, so we could quickly take a look at uh, at that um, and share with you a few examples. But when when we talk about and especially um and I think I saw Jessica here uh as well and especially because you mentioned about the theory of change, what we're hoping to understand is um there is a problem you're looking to solve for what is that problem what do you want to achieve how are you planning to achieve it so it's almost like what do you want to achieve is um those you know consolidated summarized um and say outcomes of if we do this we will get this um so once you talk about this is what we're hoping to gain when we think about the change we want to see, then we want to understand and how will you do that? And that's where the strategy is coming. Um, and then depending on how you expand on the strategies, then you could, uh, you could, and I'm using the word, you could add activities to say, yes, this is the strategy we're looking to um, work with education um on say stakeholders uh to support us in moving or adaptation of a policy that will mean that Wikipedia will be used in every classroom as a tool for digital uh skills um, um you know to teach digital skills to secondary school students for example but then you will go further in terms of activities and this could be within that or within the question you know when we talk about the annual plan where you now say for the activities we will have a stakeholder meeting with education um uh, key education stakeholders we will further enroll secondary school secondary schools and in each school we will have about 20 um high school students for example so we're looking at this story you you're sharing around this is the problem and with this this problem which is could be big and ambitious this is what we hope to achieve at the very end this is the change we hope to see at the very end of our effort the contribution because in most cases it's a contribution we can't fully solve the problem so the contribution to solving the problem is this and this is how we're going to make this contribution then later within the metrics we want to understand from you and how will you know you've made progress what is this that you will measure that then tells you we are making progress we have signed one one policy has been um, adapted by various maybe the ministry of education in your uh, country or in your county or province depending on how you you uh, you organize in your country in some cases, you just want it to be tabled in a specific space. Uh, maybe you want to work with 200 students. That's an output outcome. Um, but then the outcome is that these students are able to use Wikipedia to inform the information they're taking in. They're able to analyze it and they're using it to improve their digital skills. So that's another, when we think about um, impact outcomes. So that's when we think, and that's the theory of change, simplified. We hope it's simplified. And I will put um, a few links here of a recent completed um, learning clinic to support grantee partners in, um, I would say, demystifying or having a, a, a better or strengthening their current understanding of the theory of change. To each program specifically, yes. So once you speak on the outcomes, then you will now state, and this is how we hope to address this. Program number one, education. Program number two, maybe gender. And within gender, this is what, you know, you could summarize. I, I always say different groups 
are different. There are groups that will summarize their education program and you fully get what the education program is about. And then there are groups that will need to break it down a little bit because for them, that's the way they're able to articulate what the education program is all about. Yeah, but um, in a nutshell, that's, that's, that's what that question is about. You're welcome, Michelle. Okay, and I'll put their slides and uh, on the chat. If anyone else has another question, we have many committee members in this call. Uh, we also have quite a number of grantee partners um, and program officers as well. Feel free to share your question or comment or something you think could be clearer, we could do better, um, something that's working as well um yeah Uh, Harriet has a question. Yes, um, so I'm also a grantee, so I'd like to ask them to seek some clarification concerning the um new proposal for renewal. That is the flux um um questions. So uh, the while trying to fill the form, I had a hard time trying to um find where I should document our uh, impact for the entire year. So I didn't know if I should place it under the question eight, where we were asked to talk about our programs, the challenges, and then the strategies. And then on our own, decided to write the impact there, or rather to document it in our annual um, plan. So that was the um, challenge that we had, and I'd be happy if you could um, provide some clarity on that. Harriet, would you come, ag come again on where was the challenge? Yeah, the challenge was where to actually write the impact for uh um uh like the whole proposal. Mm -hmm. So I didn't know if I should write it under the question eight where we're asked to talk about our programs, the strategies or the challenges that we are trying to um um address or whether to write it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yes, yes. Um in talking about the challenges we're trying to address and and this is good feedback because then it allows us to, I won't say polish up the application form. It, it's, you know, to check on the wording as well. So in our hope was that in addressing, in speaking to this is the problem you want to address, you will also speak to, and this is the change you're hoping to see. And that for us, you know, when, when people talk about impact, sometimes impact can be a can see you know can come off as a very complex uh, term uh, so we did try to break it down a little bit more so that then um, when you address that this is a problem we're trying to solve and this is to the extent that we want to see change in relation to abc um, so that's where to put the the impact again like butch mentioned as we review your proposal and we may be having a, a, a challenge in fully grasping the idea you're putting forward. Uh, our hope, you know, not that our hope, we will include steps in place for avenues for you to provide more clarity. Um, whether that's um, using yeah. the feedback we provide on Meta or uh, on a face-to-face -face session with or a call. Um, I mean, a, a, a virtual call with the committee members. Yeah. But that's where we're hoping to understand. And what is this change you're hoping to see from um, you implement having implemented your proposal in the future? Yeah. Thank you.
much. Okay. Um, I received this uh, question from uh, random Wikimedians also that I've uh, encountered uh, during Wikimania is uh, uh, at what time uh, does uh, a, an organization is already eligible to apply for a annual uh, community grant? Uh, or at what time that they are not yet prepared and uh, they should start at uh, a, a rapid grant only? Um, I can go and pass it to the waiter or anyone else. So for a very long time uh, before the new grant strategy, only, I want to say, affiliates or set up organizations or um registered groups would access the annual the more long-term funds but with a new grant strategy we eliminated um these requirements and criteria recognizing that in some cases there were barriers we were also very keen that we didn't want to um create this sense of engineering uh um you know, our, you know, our communities that for you to access more long-term funding that support, supported um, uh, long-term uh, programming, you needed to form an NGO. We didn't want that, especially because we know that comes with a lot of responsibility as well. Uh, and in some cases takes away um, the focus or the strengths of our community. Uh, what that means in, in short is that um, individuals, and this has happened already, groups that are formal, informal to mean you're locally registered, you're not locally registered, um, can get an annual grant. So it is not uh, tied to um, you being a recognized affiliate. We have funded individuals for long-term projects. We've uh, whether it's individuals coming together for collaborative project, we've, we've uh, funded communities that are organized in their own ways for with annual grants. Um, uh, we know, however, that comes with a challenge of you may not, depending on country as well, um, have uh, be able to have, for example, a joint account, which is an enabler or is a useful um instrument in supporting further accountability or putting in place those financial structures for your community to build on you know um, more financial accountability and management um, and that's where the fiscal partner comes in which we we talked about earlier that they they become then that element to remove the barrier of we can't have a fiscal we can't have a bank a joint bank account we can't have an organization account because maybe you don't even want to and that's okay uh, but does that mean you don't get long-term resources i don't think so um, and that's why we bring in a fiscal partner who you you could know one and you can let us know who you're considering and we will do our checks uh, or we could suggest um, a partner who is willing and we have a number who are willing and ready to support groups that uh, can benefit from from their support. Yeah. Sandra, is it uh, direct? Sandra? Uh, hello, I would like to ask my question in Arabic, please. Okay. Uh, هناك سؤال حقيقة السؤال الأول uh, هو هل هل بإمكاننا كمجموعة مستخدمين تقديم منحة سريعة إن كان إن كان لدينا تمديد للمنحة الحالية أو إن كان لدينا uh, مشروع إضافي لم ندرجه في المنحة العامة للمجموعة هذا هو السؤال الأول. مع الإيضاح السبب طبعا وكل التفاصيل السؤال الثاني هو ما هو المناسب لمجموعة مستخدمين جديدة إن كنا نريد إنشاء مجموعة مستخدمين جديدة ما هو الطريق الأنسب لها هل يجب أن تتقدم بمنحة سريعة أولا أو يجب أن تخطط لمنحة سنوية وما هو المسار الأمثل برأيك لهذا الموضوع 
آه عذرا ان كان الموضوع كبيرا لكن هذا سؤال الذي لديه وشكرا جزيلا لكم So the first question was, can a grantee who's a general support fund partner apply for a rapid grant? And the answer is no. Why? So a, a grantee partner who has a general support fund has already resources to, you know, give them the opportunity for long term you know, planning, long-term resourcing, they already have that. Of course, we know sometimes as you go along, a new partnership comes up, a new project comes up that maybe you hadn't included in your existing annual plan. In that case, we always, and we have done this, so we're not just speaking from theory, we have done this where we ask, if you already have a general support grant, ask for an amendment from your, you know, um, ask, make a request, for these additional funds, and we will make an amendment on your existing grant agreement. We also want to make sure that we're being, we're creating space for everyone to be able to access resources. So if we have a general support fund grantee who already has the privilege of having the long-term funds to also tap into the rapid fund where it's more supporting short-term, uh, uh, low resource projects, we think it's only fair to let the rapid funds be rapid funds and for the general support fund grantee to request for additional funding, but within their current grant agreement through an amendment. Yeah. Uh, what is the best way to ask for just from your program officer? Yeah. Just letting your program officer know we have this new program, it will cost us uh, X amount. Um, and that's it. Morgan is here. She, she is, she is, uh, uh, our support for all amendments. Yeah. Morgan, did I miss anything on the amendments? Uh, no, no, you didn't, Veronica. Um, I would just want to emphasize that we we would like to have these requests in writing. So this could be in the form of you posting on the discussion page of your um, application or an email to the program officer um, who can then review and, and discuss with you and ultimately um, formalize uh, an approval um, over email. So we, we, we just want to have that kind of documented and, and to confirm that this additional funding is indeed for um, the uh, your proposed or requested um, projects or activities. Yeah. Um, and I think I, I should add, once the, the approval for the amendment has been made, then I or the grant grants administrators would work with you on just confirming your uh, current information, your bank information, um, nonprofit status if you have one, um, so that we could issue the fund those additional funding to you as soon as possible. Um, and this should all occur within your current general support period. So for example, if your grant is ending on the 31st of December 20, 2023, we would advise you to uh, make your requests as well before that date so that we could still include it in your current grant period. So I hope that makes sense. All right, thank you, Morgan. The second part of your question, you're a new group, you're looking for resourcing. What is the best plan? It all depends on the plan. Um, if your plan requires that you need, um, I won't say, uh, advanced commitment of resourcing more than the, you know, the required rapid fund bond, um, then, you know, it's... Um, it makes sense that you're looking into the general support fund. We we have funded um, a number of new projects, new ideas on general support fund. Uh, 
And the main thing is that within that current question eight, we're able to understand what is the problem, what is the impact you, you want to achieve, the strategies. Overall, that there's a clear plan for you to, um, that is guiding uh, the implementation of, of your work. Yeah, so it, I, I can not say in some cases, the groups that want to pilot a plan. So a rapid fund is such a fantastic uh, program to get started on these pilots. Uh, and then with time, depending also on the scope of the pilot, it could be that the scope is uh, big enough that it requires a, an initial general support fund um, resourcing, or it just requires uh, a rapid fund res resourcing type of funding to test a few things before then you, you, you know, venturing out on a long term path. All right, uh, Butch, Gazi, um, Mercedes, David, anything else? I see we are on clock. Yeah, just one uh, common question that I receive. Uh, what is the process if there is underutilized funds? For instance, uh, they have a surplus. Uh, do they have to return the money? Do they just uh, reallocate it in the next fiscal period or what? Very good question. Very good. Um, our hope, and Morgan is here, we always, and so our hope, and in some cases, depending on country, it's very difficult for you to send back money to the United States. Um, we would hope because we know the resources will be useful either in your next plan um, that you, two things, you're able to um, identify opportunities for these underspend to be used within existing programming or a new program that you want to um, test, experiment on, learn with. Uh, number two, uh, that you nothing is changing, nothing new is going to happen. So in that case, we deduct it from your next quart. Uh, and this happens also for rapid funds. So if I had a rapid fund and uh, the balance was, let's say, five hundred dollars in my next annual in my next rapid fund, uh, we would deduct a five hundred because you already have that um, money uh, or those funds. So same thing can happen for your general support fund, especially where there is no avenue for reallocation or no need. Additionally, where there is no, I have, you know, this, you haven't already identified an, an area or a new program you want to test on all while being aligned with your existing, um, what is already committed within the existing grant agreement. Yeah. But this is something you can just share with your program officer and you will figure it out together. Yeah. All right. Um, before I pass it to Bocho Gozi to close, mine is to say thank you very much for taking the time on your Sunday to join this space, interact with the committee, the program officers, and share your questions, clarifications, and comments. Um, and looking forward to the next one. And thank you, Bocho and Gozi, for inviting us as well. And to the to Mercedes, Morgan, David. I think Jessica was here as well, the, the team and all the regional funding committee members and grantee partners. Thank you for taking your time and to interpret us. Thank you so much. So uh, thank you everyone for attending this session. Uh, if in case uh, you suddenly have a question uh, after this uh, conversation, feel free to email your program officer. Have a nice day. Thank you, everyone. You can open your voice. <laughs> you can unmute and say bye-bye. And thank you. Take care, everyone. Bye. Have a good week thank ahead. You. Thank, thank you, Veronica. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you, Butch. Thank you, Gazi. Bye. Mm -hmm. Take care. Thanks, David. Did he drop? He already dropped. Okay. All right. Bye. Bye, Jenna.